Welcome back guys, it's Bromley at Empire Barbell and today I want to talk about how to program for beginners. Now I just did a video about one of the reasons I don't like West Side and a lot of it is that those types of tactics get applied to beginners where you have something that involves a lot of variation, a lot of changing training modes very frequently and a lot of overly heavy work which assumes that your skill level is very high before you go into that type of training. Those types of modes don't apply to beginners. In fact, they can actively be counterproductive if you're a beginner. So there's a reason that we stick to more simplified versions of training, whether you're talking about uh, simple linear progressions like starting strength, or even just very simple bodybuilding templates that involve a high frequency of training with a lot of sets and a lot of repetitions. Remember that training the barbell lifts is a skill. The more often you train them, the more sets, the more reps, the more frequently you get touches on them, the faster you're going to improve in these lifts as a skill. And you need a high level of skill before you try to increase your strength dramatically or before you try to handle very heavy poundages or very intense loads. As fatigue climbs up, precision tends to drop. So you need to have all of these motor pathways automatic before you try to do really ball busting workouts in these more complicated lifts. I'm going to reiterate for the thousandth time, stability and coordination will always come before strength and power. Now to start out when talking about how we program for a beginner, we need to kind of outline what a beginner is. You might also hear the term novice thrown around as a novice, intermediate and advanced lifter. Well, the first bracket, the white belts as I call them, are gonna meet a few criteria. One is they're gonna have a short training history, meaning they haven't been at it that long. So a short training history is gonna be somebody who's been at it at least a few years or less. Now, the important thing to note is the word training, okay? There's plenty of people who have been lifting for a long time or who've been active for a long time who I still might classify as a beginner because they haven't been applying themselves in a specific lift with a specific technical threshold that they're trying to meet. You could take somebody who spent 10 years doing leg presses and bicep curls and they're still going to be a beginner in the sense of doing complex barbell lifts. So they're not going to be physiologically adapted to the type of training that you're going to expect to see when you are a more intermediate or advanced lifter. Low skill level is the next one and that's kind of tied into the short training history. Beginners don't have a very good technical grasp on the movements. They're bench press bar path isn't going to be consistent. Their squat depth isn't going to be consistent. They might have issues with really understanding how the movement is supposed to go. And because of that, they're not going to really be able to grasp exactly where the handle is as far as where do I feel that tension? Where does that initial drive come from? Very proficient lifters know the ins and outs of every movement that they do from top to bottom. They know exactly how to get tight to set up for a big push out of the hole. They know exactly how to manipulate the bar on the way up to go into their sweet spot. If you've ever seen a more advanced lifter miss a lift and then say that they misgrooved it, beginners can't misgroove it because they don't have an understanding of what the groove is to begin with. Having a high skill level means knowing exactly why you're moving it a certain way and how to move it that way. It assumes that everything you do in a lift is very deliberate and getting that skill level it takes time, it requires a longer training history. Now, the third one, and this is a little harder to, def uh, to define, but a proportionately low level of strength. Now, here we're talking about strength standards and there's kind of a, a general level you have to be at before you can really consider yourself more than just a beginner or a novice. You could have been at it for a very long time, and I know guys like this, that all of their training is just skill work, be just beating, the skill work into the ground, just technique, technique, technique. And that's great, but not when it comes at the expense of any strength or hypertrophy work. So you could have the cleanest setup in the world, but if you've never subjected yourself to loads that actually grow strength, it really doesn't matter. Again, it's about conditioning your body to a certain load and a certain work capacity. If you haven't gone through the paces of developing that strength or any additional muscular size, you're gonna be an unconditioned athlete no matter how good your technique is. They really do have to go hand in hand. So for somebody with proportionally low strength, I would say somebody who doesn't have uh, the ability to really manipulate their own body weight that well. Let's say if you gas out after 15 body weight squats, you're probably not strong enough to be considered anything more than a beginner, no matter how good your setup might be. Let's say somebody who can't do very many push-ups. 
Uh, I mean, I had a kid who was six foot, 200 pounds in high school. And the first time he bench pressed, he was 55 pounds for four reps before failure. So when you're looking at such a low physical capacity that you really can't handle a wide volume of work, you're gonna, you're, we're talking about somebody with proportionally low strength levels. You don't necessarily have to be an elite lifter to get out of that beginner bracket, but you do have to be able to handle some poundages with authority. You have to be able to manipulate more than just an empty barbell without your technique falling apart because you physically can't uh, keep the load where it's supposed to be. Now, mostly when we think of beginner, I think of somebody with no physical background. We get a lot of sedentary people. We get a lot of younger people. We get people who haven't had the chance to really train or grow that are just brand new, completely green. Uh, I get to build them up from the ground up. And that's great because we can learn good habits the first time. But there's exceptions to the rule, right? So I know actually very good lifters who meet some of these criteria. I know a guy with an elite total as a power lifter who has a squat in the mid sixes, has a deadlift in the high 700s, and has a bench right around 500 pounds. But his squat is horrendous. Even though he's very strong in a deadlift, his lower body is very strong, he has no quads and he has no concept. He has a very lanky body. Doesn't have a concept of how to move into a squat. So for that reason, he goes knock need. He bends forward quite a bit. He good mornings the weight up uh, once it starts to get heavy. And he's too proud to drop to the to the numbers he has to, to really dial in better technique and become a technical squatter. So even though this guy by all means is elite, I would still classify him as a beginner if I was going to take him and build his squat back up. And that means he would follow a lot of the same principles that we're about to follow right here. So it's not just one clean category that you fall into. There's bits and pieces you can break apart and diagnose and you can apply some things to some people and others to someone else. It's very possible that you're very advanced in one lift and very poorly advanced in another. And that's gonna actually dictate your approach when it goes into fixing these issues. So if we're talking about people who aren't very strong or who don't have a very high skill level or who haven't been training that long, the first order of business is going to be get their skill level up. It does not matter how much muscle mass we put on you or how much physically stronger we make you. If you do not have a good enough skill level to put that force that you can produce into the barbell. And there's plenty of examples of this. Um, I've known guys who have trained one specific way to become very big, very strong, but they're not able to coordinate themselves at all in a barbell lift, especially when it puts them in an awkward position, like at the bottom of the squat. It is a skill. Getting good at these movements means fostering that skill. The way you improve skill is by doing lots of repetitions, lots of practice over time. It's no different than learning to juggle or ride a unicycle. You're gonna go down the series of cues, that, uh, things conceptually that you wanna understand while you're going through the steps, but nobody can do it for you. And it's not something that you're gonna pick up by running through a couple hard attempts and then taking your lunch bag and going home. You have to put in the work, you have to put in the time. So for that reason, we are always gonna favor two things. That is high volume, right? Because high volume means a lot of sets and a lot of reps, and we're gonna favor high frequency, and we're going to favor, this is important guys, sub-maximal weights. So this is reason number one why I hate Westside for beginners is because sub-maximal weights are not part of Westside's prescription. Sub-maximal weights means weights that are not incredibly difficult for you to, to, to lift, meaning that you're not reaching failure, you're not getting to that point where you can no longer control the, the load. It means you're working with weights that allow you to practice very specific movement patterns so that you're in control at all times. The weight has to be heavy enough to elicit an effect, a training effect, and it has to be heavy enough to keep you honest while you're working. But it still has to be light enough that you can adjust position, that you can focus on the finer points of your setup to make sure that things are moving evenly and deliberately. With a squat, with a deadlift, with a bench, that is true for each one. Now, many of you have a hard time with that because your ego overtakes the, the training decisions when you're working out. It is a very hard thing to admit to yourself that even though I can move this from point A to point B, it's shit. And as long as I keep doing this way, it will continue to be shit. So you have to get honest with yourself. You have to look at better lifters, look at the way they move the bar, look at their setup, look at how their working sets look. 
And you have to say, do I want to look more like that guy? Or do I want to be the guy that keeps breaking myself against loads that are too heavy until things break down and then I keep reinforcing those shit habits? The fact is, really, really strong dudes don't get that way by putting heavy loads on and just breaking themselves against it until they get it. So for all of you guys that are a pubic hair away from like a 225 bench or like a 405 squat and then you, keep, you just keep putting it on hoping that one day you come in and you get it, that's not how you fucking get it. Okay, 600 pound benchers didn't put 600 pounds on the bar and keep missing their 600 pound bench until one day they got it. It is all the other things you do. It is all the other exercises. It is all the volume, all the practice, all the good quality reps that you do that contributes to that next bump. So if you prioritize that and leave the ego lifting at the door, I promise you, you will blow past your old numbers. One of the most tried and true methods of training for beginners is just an old fashioned linear progression. Now linear progression means that we're taking one metric of training. So in this case, it's, it's the load, it's the weight that we're using and we're moving up linearly in a straight line. No waves, no resets, nothing fancy. Basically you're doing the same exercise, same level, uh, same number of sets and reps and we're just adding a little weight each time. So if we add five pounds and we're going twice a week, then you're jumping 10 pounds a week like clockwork until you hit a wall. Now that will eventually happen, right? Because if you increase 10 pounds a week over a year, 52 weeks, that's 520 pounds. You're probably not gonna put 520 pounds on your lift in a year. So practice for any one lift doesn't really need to exceed three times a, three times a week. If you are absolutely positively new, you have very low level of strength, very low level of technical skill, then you might train three times a week on any given lift. Now this is extreme cases. This is for those who are starting out with a barbell. This is just to get, uh, get a base amount of strength and familiarity with the lift. By the time you get any amount of strength, which should happen in pretty short order, and as the lift starts to feel better for you, most people I'll put on a two day a week split. So if we're going off a basic linear progression, five by five is probably the most common set and rep range. I'm sure you all know five by five. Basically what, we would, uh, basically what we would do on week one, I start out with something that amounts to about 60% of a one rep max. Uh, if you don't have an idea of what that is, just take something you can do 15 to 20 reps with, with good form, and you're gonna start out with that. So every time you come in, you're gonna make a five pound jump. Now in the beginning, it's gonna feel stupid. You're gonna be like, why am I doing this five by five with such light weight? The point is to keep a very high technical ceiling, keep a very rigid hold on exactly how you move. Get comfortable with the movement, learn how to brace, figure out how to get tight into the hole and explode up. These are the things you need to focus on with light weight that you can't focus on with maximal weight. If you're one of these guys that every time the load gets heavy, you start to cut depth or your knees start to come in or you start to get pitched forward, this is where you fix it. Now. To keep a little incentive in your training program, I'm a fan of plus sets. Now these have popped up in just about every ebook you've ever heard of. Uh, this is this whole template I'm about to write out is derived from the Grayskull LP. Uh, I don't even know if uh, they're still around or if that website's still around. But um, what was it Strength Villain? It's just another twist on the same type of linear progression. Starting strength has one. Strong list has one follows the exact same principles, the little changes they make, largely arbitrary. I mean, they'll rationalize them away, but they're, they're largely arbitrary. It's really the fact that it's a steady linear progression and they just play around with, you know, what lifts go on what days and, you know, to what capacity. So a plus set really just means you're gonna run through your sets of five. On your fifth set, you're gonna do as many as you can. Now what that does is it creates a number for you to chase. It's a form of auto-regulation. It gives you an idea of how how well you're doing. So you have this rep max at a certain weight. Well, when you go in next week and you add five pounds on your plus set, you want to beat that. So if I did a hundred pounds on my last set for 15 reps, God damn, I want to hit 15 reps at 105 the next week. Cause that means I've gotten stronger. And in the beginning, in the first few weeks, you'll even find that you might exceed that. You might have improved so much from this workout to this workout, not just in size and strength, but in being more efficient and moving better, you're gonna find that you beat those numbers. So that gives a nice little uh, 
a little bit of spice, a little bit of flavor into the workout so that it's a little less dry and monotonous. So push the plus sets hard. I'm a real big fan of those. Those really add something extra to these simplified linear progressions. Obviously the important thing is to uh, not lose your technical ceiling. Failure doesn't mean when the bar stops moving or when you die. Failure means when you start breaking down and your form looks like shit. Only by keeping that ceiling and abiding by it will you over time progress your technique. If you make a habit out of deviating from your, your perfect technical setup every time the weight gets a little heavy, that's a habit that you're gonna have for your entire lifting career. And if you get stronger, it will be in the context of your shitty setup, which means you will always be leaving poundages on the table and you will always be one wrong move away from injury. So keep that in mind. So for squatting twice a week, I like to have another lower body on day two, but it'll be a variation just to break it up. It's a lot harder to progress linearly if you're doing three times a week on the same movement, so we'll rotate another movement in. Deadlifts are a good one. You don't need to go crazy with the volume. What I've seen are warm-ups to a top set of five or top set of five or more, and then you add weight each week. Uh, I would say one to three sets of five or more. And same thing, you start at 60%, and each week you come back to this, add five to 10 pounds. Again, keeping a very rigid technical ceiling. Um, front squats are another good one you could put in. Some type of squat variation, a box squat might even be a good one. You can play around with it, but each one, remember, it's strict technical work. Now you can do the same thing for your upper body. You can do an overhead press. Maybe in the middle of the day, you do a horizontal press, like a, or you could do dips, or you could do a bench press. The important thing for you guys is that you're keeping a rigid technical ceiling and you have this built-in method of progressing. So you don't have to guess what you're doing next week. You know, you have your numbers you have to hit, you have the increase on the week's percentage before, you're chasing that plus set, and all's right in the world. Uh, for this, what I've seen is alternating. So overhead, bench, overhead, maybe the week after you'll go bench, overhead, bench. So you'll keep rotating through the same upper body movements. You don't do that up here because deadlifting twice a week is a really fucking bad idea. So as a beginner, you start out, you hit your five by five, you increase. Let's say a few weeks go by and you were hitting 100 pounds for five sets of five, maybe getting 10 or 12 on your last set. By the end of your run, maybe you're at 150 and you're in a similar position where you're up to 10, 12 reps on your last set and you're clearing out the sets of five like they're nothing. Not only is that gonna correspond undoubtedly to more size and more strength, but I promise you, you will be a much more technical lifter and that will favor you down the road. And you can run this wash, rinse, repeat as many times as you want until it stops regressing. There's even more intermediate versions where they'll start to play with the, uh, the volume on one day versus another. So you can go really heavy on one day and then hit your light five by fives on the other. Uh, the Texas method is a good example of that, these intermediate linear progression programs. Um, and then eventually you'll be primed to handle much more aggressive modes of training that have more moving parts, more variety. But do not put the cart before the horse. Get your technique down first. I strongly recommend linear progressions. Uh, there's a whole host of programs that I'm gonna be coming out with down the, down the pike that uh, will apply to different skill sets. And as you get more advanced, you can jump into those without a problem. So one workout, you have your squats, then you have your overhead presses. Uh, you can round it out. You still wanna do accessory work. So bodybuilding is your best friend. When in doubt, just fucking bodybuild. If you aren't sure what to do if something's hurting, or if you're stagnant on a lift, or you don't have any direction, bodybuilding is your best bet. If you can find a muscle or group of muscles, train them, fatigue them, and grow them, you're on the right path. But as long as you're going too heavy too often with the same barbell lifts, you're shooting yourself in the foot and you're gonna wear yourself down. So what we do is we follow this up with our accessory, which is any mix of rows, bicep work, tricep work, and abs. And if you're really vain, you can even throw in calves, forearms, and traps. I don't because I don't give a shit how I look. I'm just here to perform. So this is an incredibly simple template to run. You can run this indefinitely. Once you hit a brick wall, what you can do is drop back down to square one and build up again, and you will be surprised at how much better you are on those plus sets and how much longer you can run it before you hit the wall again. It takes a little bit of patience, but it's worthwhile. That's one of the reasons these modes of training are so common. If you are a new lifter, 
Like if you're a grown ass man and your squat is under 400 pounds and your bench press is under 300 pounds, I am telling you 100% you will grow very fast from a program like this. So put your ego at the door, learn how to follow a program, how to stick to it, and do it for more than two goddamn weeks before you decide to scrap it. Okay, something like this, run for six weeks, eight weeks. If you can put 30 pounds on your lift in a two month run, that was a good goddamn run, okay? So hedge your bets a little bit, learn to be patient, learn to follow through. So these were some of my tips for programming for beginners. Leave your questions and feedback in the comments. Until next time, this is Bromley with Empire Barbell.